wait for it. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, so good. Oh, yep, here's another one. Perfect. Okay, so what does a Mazda 3 trunk and a Corvette hood have in common? Well, they're both moved by mechanisms and mechanisms are great. I've got a huge appreciation for them. They're really simple to design with, really simple to work with, but they can accomplish really complex tasks. So on this episode of Dirty Elbows Garage, we are talking about some mechanisms. Okay, so both the hood and the trunk, those are called four bar linkages, meaning that they've got four components to them. They've got the base, link number one, which is typically the chassis. Two and four are these auxiliary linkages that you actually saw connecting to three, and three was both the hood and the trunk. Now there's a reason for that. Linkage number three, you can get really creative with the path that it takes. It's the one that you typically design the entire mechanism around. And linkage number two and four, well, these are typically used in industrial equipment, things like that. Things, times where you need to use a lot of force or you need to have a certain operational angle. How do you get that trunk to open, pull away from the car and then pivot? Now, if you were to use a simple pivot point, if you place your pivot point here, obviously the trunk would go down and this backside of it, this little bit here, would crush into the rest of the car. So you'd have to put your pivots way at the edge here to actually allow it to open. And in a lot of cases with body shapes and other things like that, that's not possible. So we have to go with the four bar linkage and it might seem intimidating at first. I'll show you just how simple it is. It's actually a lot of fun. So what I'm going to be showing you is how do you set up one, two, and four based on a known path that you want link number three to take. So let's jump into SolidWorks and get to work. Okay, so we have SolidWorks open now. What we're going to do is mimic the movement of the trunk, how the trunk kind of moved out and up, and then it started rotating open instead of moving out so much more. First thing we're gonna do is open up a sketch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick a line right here. And right now, um, dimensions don't play as big of a role, but I highly recommend getting rid of all these blue lines, making everything fully constrained if you look into doing this for yourself. That way it gives you a lot more finite adjustability. And what this is, is this is the trunk opening, kind of shifting upward and slightly tilting. And then it's gonna have one more further out here, but it's gonna be quite a bit more upright like that, okay? So we need to make sure that all of these lines are the exact same length because this is link three essentially. So I'm going to make them equal to each other. And next, I want to identify what's going on here. So this is position number one, position number two, and position number three. And of this link, this is side A, this is side A, and this is side A, this is side B, B, and B, okay? So after we have our first three positions, I'm going to take a line and I'm going to connect A1 to A2 and A2 to A3. And I'm going to do the same thing for the B side. B1 to B2 and B2 to B3. Okay. Next, I'm going to go on our newly A1, A2 line. I'm going to find the midpoint and I'm going to draw a line away from that line and I need that line to be perpendicular to this A1, A2 line. And I'm going to do the same thing for the A2, A3 line. I'm going to find my midpoint and draw a line and make sure it's perpendicular. And I'm going to repeat that process for the B side. Just draw a perpendicular line and same thing over here. Okay, so now I need to select my two lines on the A side and I'm going to click this point up here, which is going to find their convergence point. And I'm going to repeat that process for the B side. Same thing, I found their convergence point. Okay, so now I essentially have all the parts I need to make my mechanism. These convergence points are the base pivot points for the mechanism. They're the base of link number two and link number four, and together they are the chassis, or they are link number one. So I'm gonna take a line and I'm gonna connect this one to side one, or uh, side A1, and I'm gonna take this link and I'm gonna tie it to 
side B1. Okay, so there's a lot going on here to kind of simplify things. I always exit this sketch and let's make it visible. And then I'm going to start a new sketch that I'm going to overlay over this one so we can exactly see what's going on. So I'm gonna draw a line off of my main pivot points like I said, and I'm just gonna try and tie it back down here. Then I'm going to take my link number two, make it equal to this line. My link number three, make it equal to this line. And then my link number four, and I'm gonna make it equal to this line. Okay, it's a little bit squashed right now, but here we go. So we are currently in position one. It makes sense because all we're doing is we're overlaying these other lines down there. Now we're going to sweep it through the path that it needs to travel. So there's position one, there's position two, and there's position three. And you can even take it further if you wanted to. So do you see how that link number three is traveling exactly how we want it to move? It's starting down here, it's going up, kind of translating away from the origin, and then it's pivoting towards the end and really opening up, letting you access, giving you access into the car. Now, this is all adjustable. If you go back to this sketch here, you can change any one of these positions. And like I said, I'd, I'd recommend fully detailing out a lot of these stop-start points. If you detail at these points, you can actually start pulling this geometry around and shift where your locations are down here. This is an extremely flexible model. Added this rectangle feature really quick, just to kind of show how that trunk moves. Your starting point down here with the trunk closed, as you open it, it translates away from the vehicle, and once it's at a high enough point, it just starts rotating more quickly instead of coming outside the vehicle so much. And that wraps up this video. I tried to simplify that process as much as possible. If I didn't do it for you and you have some questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. If you liked what you saw today, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. And as always, thanks for watching.